Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day two of the Spalding Hoop Hall Classic. Today, here at Springfield College, we are here for the Springfield Central Golden Eagles going against the Central Catholic High School Raiders. You're tuned into Focus Springfield once again, and this is Cyril Zanetti with... Tony Petaway, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Tony, we saw two great games last night, and it was definitely an interesting night, and we saw a lot of high-scoring momentum plays, and now to switch it over to the girls, we'll see what's in store for us. As for Central, it will be Alicia Maxwell getting ready for the tip-off, and for the Raiders, it is Emily Downer. Well, they looked evenly matched from just looking out from our bird's eye view up here in the nest. We'll see as the action has taken place. And to start it off for them, it was Maxwell winning the tip off. So to start it off, it's Guthrie to send it up to Maxwell. Maxwell put it up, no good, trying to get the rebound, sticks with it, finds Nala Roach in the corner for three, and she gets it to go to start it off early. They're settling into their offense, and now on defense, they're playing a 1-2-2. A two, two. And now it's Bridgewater. Guarded by Guthrie. She's going to kick it out on the wing for the three attempt. No good. And Maxwell will haul it in for the rebound. She gets it up to Guthrie, and Guthrie's going to take a cross. And now the ball is lost, and with the recovery is Niles. So she'll take it slowly on her own pace, bring it back, and here is Bridgewater. And she finds. And the pass stolen. On to the other end for the Eagles. Looking to gain momentum, slow it down, and find a successful finish. So it's Guthrie on the wing to drive. Foul called on the floor, and she will be heading to the line for two. The Raiders are playing a man-to-man -man or person-to-person -person, uh, defense and are trying to test the waters, if you will, by being close in proximity and putting a body on people early to see if they can force some turnovers and slow the tempo. Well, as I was going on, there will be a whistle blown for the five-second violation on Guthrie, not able to inbound it in time, and it's Bridgewater with it now. So she'll take it across, and Guthrie will be there to guard her. Top of the key pass on the wing to Porto. And she finds Downer. Downer gets it to go for the shot. So to get them on the board, three to two now. And the Raiders want to stop them here with Guthrie on the drive. And it's Bridgewater on the poke. On to the other side to finish, hopefully. Gets it up. Foul called. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Very heady guard play at this particular point. I think they're both equally matched from a physicality standpoint, but I like Bridgewater very headsy and uh, very hard nose on the defensive end. She's on the charity stripe to see if she can cash in. So she gets her first one to go, and as Tony mentioned, she's very, very electric, you could say, already starting it off and getting, you could say, into the head of the Eagles as getting that big fast break stop, getting that momentum, go on to the other side, and then put up your free throws, make it, take the lead early on. The Raiders apply pressure with the full court press at this particular point, and see if we have press breaker. So now it's Tauta Latasi, top of the key. She's gonna cross, drive in, rejected! Met at the rim from Porto as she gets it out of there, and it will remain Eagles ball. They're gonna inbound it, and that is Guthrie. Check her hand for the Spalding imprint as she got <laughs> all palms on that one. And go through with the bounce pass to Maxwell. Maxwell shake it away in there but could not get it to go in. So now there will be a turnover on the over the back foul called. And now that will set up the Raiders as they will get it back. And with this opportunity they will be up. So to Keep that lead going for them. It's Bridgewater, guarded by Guthrie. She's gonna pass it out on the wing. The three shot, no good. Maxwell fighting for the board. Roche gets it instead, gives it a Guthrie. So now the Eagles have to score on this look. And Guthrie trying to take it herself. And they're gonna call a travel instead of getting that foul for her. 
So obviously not really what you want to start it off with, Tony. Yeah, a lot of turnovers as the nervous energy is still in the air. They're trying to settle themselves and get back to their offense. Just slow the tempo, give what the defense allows, and try to exploit where you can. Patience is a virtue. Well, absolutely. And now right here is Niles. She disses it off to Porto. And we've seen a lot of offensive, um, you know, dominance from the Raiders here as they're constantly attacking. And, of course, now with that one-point lead, they want to increase it. So Porto on the inbound pass. She finds Finney. Finney lets it go. But instead, rebound by Tawa Tassi. And now she's going to go coast to coast. And on the wing, shot up, no good. The attempt was from Bahati. And the long distance pass almost intercepted, but it sets up on the top of the key, the shot from Downer. So now the Eagles, they gotta go on this momentum break as Guthrie, guarded by Bridgewater, will be called for a foul. And they have to capitalize on this as it will slow them down for a second and on the inbound. So Roach will be subbed out for the Eagles. Now, Tadal Atassi, drive, no good on the finish. And here's Porto. Slows it out, gives it a Bridgewater. Guarded by Guthrie, finds Finney. Deep three on the wing, no good. And the Maxwell rebound gives Central another opportunity with Tadal Atassi. Pull up three. Can't get the dagger to go. Rebound for the Raiders, and it's Bridgewater again. A lot of momentum continuing, whether they finish or not, but we've seen Bridgewater, as you mentioned earlier, continue to hustle for them. Yes, a lot of back and forth as they're going both 91 north and south, uh, unsuccessful with the outside shots. But uh, still, I like the tenacity and the hustle as you see it tied up here. I'm really excited about this brand of basketball as it's not above the rim, but the phys physicality is there and the fundamentally sound uh, play is on display here. Well, absolute, absolutely, Tony. And on the inbound, the Raiders are able to recover it after almost falls out, but it's go three on the steal to lead the fast breakaway for the Eagles to go cross. Holds on to it, spin back, guarded by Bridgewater. Spin, pull up, no good. Rebound for Niles. She sticks with it, and she gives it a Bridgewater to slow it down, and she's gonna take momentum now. Bridgewater almost loses it, gives it to Niles. Niles puts up the tray, no good. Rebound, shot from Finney. No good on the putback. And now for the Eagles. They're gonna go across the court, and it's Lopez. She gives it up. And it's Bahati shot no good, rebound by Bridgewater. On to the other side again, fast break, attempt no good. Lopez rebound. Lopez to look to finish it. As now she's gonna pump fake, give it up to Bahati. Bahati shot no good on the three attempt. Bridgewater rebound. Yeah, the slowing down of the tempo may be what we're gonna need as they're playing a frantic pace. Uh, no scoring at this particular point. Uh, last two minutes have been scoreless with the exception of a free throw. Let's see if they can break the ice here. And right there, Porto shot no good, and Maxwell will get the rebound. So 2.30 to go in the first quarter as the opening tip led to a central score. But from there, 4-3, to three, your score since. So Guthrie has it for them. And she's going to stay being guarded by Bridgewater. She's going to test her, bring her to the rim, push it to the outside. Look for Lopez, but instead Porto. Breakaway, shot rejected by Maxwell, and that will go out of bounds and remain Eagles ball. So substitutions will come in, and for the Raiders, Angloin comes in, and Guthrie will go out for the Eagles, as well as Lopez. So for the Eagles, Nala Roach and Jordan Robinson will check in. So on the inbound pass, the shot was up, no good. And here is Downer, shot once again, no good. Nala Roche rebound. 
Rose hands it off to Guthrie, and Guthrie will take it across and met by Finney. Maxwell screen. Pass to Maxwell on for the pick and roll, but it will go out of bounds, and it remains Eagles ball. I like the look there as they spread the court and try to design a play to go inside to the, uh, the big girl. Um, just a little bit beyond her reach, but uh, they keep that up and try to get some easy buckets to build some momentum here. I think the tie will change. Yeah, well, absolutely, Tony. Starting off very slow on both sides, no matter how many looks they get. So they've definitely got to look better on that part. 4-3, to three, your opening score after the Eagles' timeout. And they have to look over it for sure, Tony. But really, just the start is surprising. And as we have mentioned early on, Bridgewater looking very sharp defensively but she couldn't even finish the scores offensively either. So as much as that defense is looking, the number one source is that offense. You really gotta pipe that up for both teams and honestly, that's what they gotta look for as this timeout will soon sound the buzzer. Yes. Well, I would have never thought the score would be four to three with just a little bit more than a minute and some change left in this first you know, period of action here. But uh, nonetheless, I'm super excited to be here with you again, Ciro, for another night of high school hoop action here at the Hoop Hall Class. Well, absolutely, Tony. So now the, so the sound of the buzzer goes off and they will resume action here at the Spalding Hoop Hall Classic here on the nice evening of January 17th. So the inbound to Maxwell She's going to take it for herself, instead giving it up back to Maxwell. Post, shake, move, defended by three. So it's made clear to the Raiders that Maxwell can be a force, so they've got to cover that. And that's a good play by them, making sure that she couldn't get the open look. So now the Raiders will inbound it. And it's Porto. And the inbound successful, Roach forcing it as Angluin has it. Angluin to look to hand off to Finney. Finney trying to take the way. Roach pokes it out and Guthrie recovers. So Rashida gonna hand it off. And now Olivero will take over. Back to Guthrie. Guthrie to hand it off to Roach, but Roach can't hold on. So now Roach has the only bucket for Central tonight with that three ball to start it off and get everything going. But since then, the ball hasn't been moving on the Eagles offense as well as the Raiders. I can't pin both down. But the Raiders looking to get something from this. So they're gonna give it back to Porto and Porto. They look to call the whistle and the foul on Olivero as they're gonna redo on the inbound and Porto will be inbounding it. So inbounded, and it is Angluin who has it. She'll be met in the pass all the way down to the corner on the good ball movement as they found Niles, but it could not go in. So now for the Eagles, Lopez to find Robinson. And all the way down is Roach. Roach staying in the corner, moving the win, and now it's Olivero to find Robinson. Back to Lopez. She's gonna look for Roach in the corner for three. Open, gets it to go for the dagger. And there's the offense for the Eagles. Both points, or both buckets, I should say, are from Nala Roach on two open look threes. So you gotta cover that. And a great job for her to finish it. So now Porto looks to get a shot up of her own and can't get the lucky bounce. And even on the putback, Niles couldn't get it to go either. And Maxwell hauls in the board. Less than two to go. On the last second, they don't even seem aware that the buzzer was going down. And Tony, that will end the first quarter. Six to four, your score, as the Eagles were able to rebuttal back and get a lead that they started with by two. The Raiders got to get back into it, Tony. Yes, yeah, some good basketball being played on both sides as the defense have stepped up. On, on the Eagles, I really like to see some more slashing and cutting to the hoop by the big girl. And the guard play, I think, will settle down. I want to go back to the design offenses. 
but I'm really impressed with what I see from the uh, Raiders thus far. A lot of open looks, long rebounds, second attempts at the basket, but they've both drawn pretty cold. I guess there's a door open in here somewhere. But as the energy is definitely one that I appreciate, and the hustle is one that we've grown to expect here at this tournament, we'll hope that the offensive prowess will rear its head soon. Well, you know, when it comes to really the Raiders and the Eagles box score, yes, the Raiders had a couple minute long lead. They also had a continuous now couple minute long drought. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how things change as the Eagles look to inbound it and Guthrie will be handing it off as she'll give it to Lopez and they have now established a two point lead. So Lopez to drive the way and reject it at the paint by Porto. They are tough in the paint there. That's a second uh, cleanly blocked shot into the uh, really expensive seats there at the baseline. So now the inbound is to Olivero and she'll look to lob it up to post up Maxwell, but she couldn't. So Bridgewater now bounce pass off her shin, can't recover. Roach picks it up, gives it a Guthrie. And she's gonna wing it out to Lopez. Now she'll hold on to it. Bridgewater's good defense. And now it's Guthrie again. She's guarded. After the Oliveira back to Lopez. Now to Guthrie. Guthrie to get up the shot in the corner. And the tray ball is good again for the Eagles. As that is what's working. And now on the fast break shot, Maxwell's intimidation can work as it was not able to go down. And here's the fast break as Lopez looks to take over. She's going to pass out to Guthrie again. Guthrie to size up a little. Looking for the corner hook. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. And that will give the inbound ability to the Eagles. And for the Eagles, Oliveira will get taken out. And Bahasi will come in. Bridgewater with the reaching foul, her second. Uh, really quick hands. She's uh, had a couple of steals uh, early out, but uh, she's getting caught with her hands in the cookie jar. And yeah, I mean, get you a ride to the bench. Yeah, if you, when you started off like that, just as quick as getting two fouls early on, especially as key as her defense has been, you got to look to put her on the bench, as Tony said, for now. And here, after the Maxwell miss, it's the Raiders with it. And a nice look in the paint by Porto, but it cannot connect. Maxwell looking to go on the other side and the rebound from Bahati. So here's Guthrie on the drive. Pass out to Maxwell, and it's in for two. From the senior, Alicia Maxwell. 11 of four now, your score. And there's the scoring that the Eagles wanted. So Finney on the drive, she's gonna pass it out, and now it's in the hands of Downer. Downer to look to float it up, can't get it in. And Bahati hauls in the board. So now the Eagles with another defensive stop, hopefully leading to a score. And it's Lopez who's gonna pull up Jay, get rejected. And that was Porto, whose defense is incredible right now for the Raiders. So that will go out of bounds, and it will be the Raiders' ball. So they got that press already for the Eagles going. And the misconception on the pass, awful looking. You could say it's gonna go out of bounds and Eagles ball substitution made. Yeah, they lose a, a very good floor general and... Uh... And Tarlatasi comes in for the Eagles and it's Guthrie now. Yeah, Bridgewater's presence is obviously felt uh, where they're not able to uh, get the ball up the court. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that's that's another big thing is that defensive present. And now for the Raiders, rejected, looking to save it, but she was already out of bounds, and it will be Eagles ball. And she finds out Latassi back to go three. And she's gonna bring it down for the Eagles. On the wing, posts up Maxwell. Maxwell to body her way in, gets it off the glass and in for two for another mark to the lead. And here for the Raiders, they're looking to get a shot. 
The step back shot way off the marks and it's a Roche rebound. I think we'll see more of the same as they're gonna feed the uh, post and let her do her work. And they call the travel on Maxwell as she tried posting up and she falls down. Way to collapse if you're the Raiders. Get, get the ball low on the big uh, yeah, you have players. So when you hold it low like that, it's uh, low hanging fruit. Yeah, you gotta hold it up high up, especially with her height. So now for the Raiders on to the other side, it's Angeline and it's intercepted. Guthrie has it now. And Guthrie has a three ball of her own that helped extend the lead to nine. And now from there, the Eagles have gotten two buckets. Guthrie puts up a shot way off the mark. And both of the Eagles on the front court back there, well, at least where they were, go out and it goes out of bounds and it will be Raiders ball on the attempt to save it. Here is Downer now, guarded by Tata Latassi. And she launches it across and she gets it to Niles. Niles, back to Downer on the wing. Nice bounce pass, but it's to the wrong player as Roche is gonna slow it down. What could have been a fast break. She's gonna reset and the regain. The momentum here is Guthrie. Gonna kinda slide to the left side of the wing and she's gonna bring it back to the top of the key. Pick and roll. Nice pass to Maxwell. Maxwell gets it in for two on the nice setup. And the nice senior connection, you could say. They're the only seniors on the team. Working well, four years. You gotta love seeing that mood from the point guard and center combination. Absolutely, that's their bread and butter play there. Like you said, Ciro, the experience and knowing each other and the uh, nonverbal communication, the look off, no look pass, dropping it right in the basket there. And perfect High percentage <laughs> shot, that's what you want. Perfect nonverbal communication, as you said. Incredible play and Guthrie will check out. And Lopez will check in. And downer shot way off the mark. She gets a rebound, passes it out. And there is Porto, three, another one way off the mark. And here's Lopez on to the other side, looking for the break. Floater up, no good. Bahati fouled on the shot. So now for the Eagles, we at the line, and it's another opportunity to increase that lead. So the first shot is no good, and the substitutions. Well, looking around the crowd, it's great to see the faithful here, even with the blistering cold outside, to see the faithful come out and support the team is uh, yeah, absolutely. very, very helpful. Seriously, yeah. And now both free throws no good and you hear the intensity from Maurer for the Eagles their head coach and you'll have to see him involved but back to the court we have a, a timeout call and at first it wasn't really clear but yeah Central Catholic takes the smart move calls the timeout secures the possession and to think it over with her students and players well I've been equally impressed with all the the many uh, talented young people who've come out, whether they're cheering or playing on one of the teams uh, with a, uh, a roster spot earned by some very hard and competitive practice sessions and now game time to get a chance to see their wares and to play to the crowd. Uh, well, absolutely, Tony. And with the 15 and four score now back to it, 3.12 to go, and we have seen one thing stay the same, and that is the Raiders score. It stayed the same since about yeah. the six minute mark, you could say, of yeah. the first quarter. And yeah. you gotta love the defense from the Eagles, but it's that offensive lack right. of getting that ball going. Well, a lot of turnovers it. too uh, with the Raiders. When uh, Bridgewater went out, you saw the intensity kind of lessen somewhat in terms of their dribble penetration opportunities. Um, well, she'll be back, and I think they'll get back to their game plan. But as she sits now with two fouls, the Eagles are going to have to run the score up here and get a comfortable lead if they're going to keep a fighting Raiders team at bay. 
And now to start off for the inbound, it's Niles. She finds Downer, Downer into the paint. No good, rebound, put back, no good, foul. Should go to the line for two. So Tony, another opportunity knocking on the door. We'll see if they can take that opportunity. I think if you're the Raiders, you still play your game, go inside, something will eventually fall for you. Um, just keep take the higher percentage shots. The backboard has not been friendly to them on the layups. There's been at least Or the four. side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first free throw, good. And she gets a second one to go as well as it is now a one digit or the lead side. or the side. And 15 to six now, your updated score as Tadalatasi has it. She's gonna stay at the top of the key. Bring in the pass to Maxwell. Maxwell bodies her way to the paint and gets it in for two on the dream shake. Oh, two point oh, you could That's say. That's their bread and butter right there. <laughs> bread and butter. Butter it on both sides here. <laughs> and now the Raiders trying to make it at least to the paint as the defense presence is there. And there it is in the paint. It was Sarnik who drew the foul as she got it inside the paint. And Maxwell score and finish inside the paint. 17-6, your updated score with 2.30 to go in the first half. The second quarter has definitely been more pleasant for the Eagles than the first. Yes. And this was, I think, the eight minutes they needed. So, second free throw, no good. And the rebound will look to stay on the Raiders. But it also looked like Sharnik gave a shove at the end. But it... So it will be central ball and a timeout but taken by the Eagles. As we look around the crowd, it's great to see some of the central faithful. Uh, as always, Mr. Uh, Travis Bess and his dad, Leo Bess, are in their courtside seats. Uh, permanent fixtures here. As you look up top to the bird's eye view, we see our, our producer down there giving us some love there. Zero my hero, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm already missing you. I know, um, I know. Big senior this year. Um, it's crazy. And we were talks of uh, doing a sports reel of some of the championships. with. Yeah, uh, that'd be very cool. Miss yeah, her early. Early. And he's uh, naturally uh, seated in the uh, very expensive uh, seats, which will probably go up in value. Once LeBron gets yeah, here. <laughs> once, <laughs> once that's... That once that clock strikes nine on tomorrow, oh yeah, it'll be a different scene around here. But on tonight, we're treated to some really good hoops, Absolutely, as we have Tony. been on both evenings. Well, you know, Tony, as you mentioned, it's almost surreal. Um, you know, even me announcing at Gillette, it was very, very, you know, eye-opening for me. It was, you know, one of these last opportunities for me, and this is most likely my last opportunity here at Focus and doing it with none other than Tony Petaway. It is a honor to finish it off and hopefully the rest of the game picks up so now back to the action the pass was intended for Guthrie goes out of bounds and the Raiders will take over and with 220 exactly to go we'll see what the Raiders can do in these last couple minutes of the first half so for the Raiders it's Finney guarded by Roche gonna set up down and the setup is good as Anglewin gets it to go. Sarosh now has it onto the other side. She's gonna bounce it off to Guthrie. Guthrie moves to the wing. Sets up Maxwell again, except ball goes out, stays central ball, however, on the Raiders' tip. They're anticipating the inlet pass to the paint now, so they're doubling down and with the weak side, help coming to help you're seeing some deflections and a little prevention of absolutely well, let's see what happens this series so Roche sets up Maxwell again and there she is sets it back out to Roche to get a shot up before the shot clock ends can't get it to go so that will be a shot clock violation you have to take miscommunication your right yeah. there you have to take your head off to the Raiders on that possession they anticipated it going inside Double down, they were to come away with a, a stop on that one. 
So to get that stop, as Tony mentioned, huge, but the Eagles get it right back. Roach gives it to Tadalatasi. And now she's on to the other side. Not gonna keep it herself. Gives it a Roche. Back to Guthrie. Guthrie on the wing. Chad. Finish. Pump. Pull up. No good. And now the Raiders have it back in their hands. But Roche gets the steal. On to the side on the fast break. Roche to keep going. Gets it in for two on the finish. And now La Roche starting off great here in the first half. As she's got some solids outage. And that is point number eight for her. Well, the uh, Lady Golden Eagles boasted a record of 17 and five on last season. Coach Eric, uh, 17 and three, correction. And really a great season for them, Tony. And we saw, we were able to commentate later on too at the Curry Hicks cage with them. And they, they looked very well. Yeah, and of course, Mauer did his job last year and they ended up falling short in the end. But we'll see what he does this season with almost an entirely new squad. Mm -hmm. As you know, we mentioned Maxwell and Guthrie are the only seniors on this mm -hmm. team. And you know, of course, sometimes that wouldn't always mean everything, you know, if you have a younger team, but this is a team where they were never really the leaders. They were more of, you know, the contributors. Mm -hmm. And we've lost players like Jaylena Sanchez and Michaela Thompson and all of that. So it's really tough for them. So now we'll see what the Eagles can do. And it's Guthrie, the senior, shot no good, hustles for it falls out and they get the ball back from the Lopez hustle she puts it up can't get it to go and now Ortiz or Lopez has it and she has it near the logo Lopez to finish but get the shot up before the shot clock goes out no good and now two seconds to go once again might not be able to get a shot up before the buzzer sounds they don't and nothing new hits the side of the backboard. And to end the first half, ladies and gentlemen, 19 and 9, your score. Eagles up, Raiders down for now. You're tuning in to Focus Springfield. And for the Spalding Hoop Hall Classic on the evening of January 17, 2020, I'm Cyril Zanetti with Tony Petaway, ladies and gentlemen. And we will be back shortly for the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the second half action for tonight's Spalding Hoopal Classic Day 2 action between the Springfield Central High School Golden Eagles and the Central Catholic High School Raiders. Tony, they started off slow, but once they got that ball rolling, the Eagles were sure to get a lead. So let's break down what the Eagles need to do to continue this lead. I think a little bit more of what they've been able to do thus far, feeding that post, their bread and butter, as Zaffer mentioned, Going inside to Maxwell, the high percentage shot, perhaps draw a foul or two, some free throws, get some rest, as she's the horse they're going to ride tonight. 11 points, uh, 12, give or take, it would be a good night for her. Double, double, I see it in the future. Well, absolutely. Now, as you were saying, Maxwell tries to force it in, grabs her rebound, looking for that double, double. She gives it a Bahati. She falls down, we're gonna call a jump ball. Love the tenacity and the hustle. They play below the rim, but they hit that hard ward and they hit it hard. Well, absolutely, they keep hitting that and they are playing very, very aggressive. And there is Bahati, her shot is good to start off the second half and she will boost the lead up. 21 to nine now in here for the Raiders is Finney. And the pass intercepted as if it is football. Maxwell clean. And here is Guthrie. She gives it a tell of Lassie. Back Bridgewater to Guthrie on the top of the key. Lineup. And here's Roche. Here's Maxwell. Maxwell. The Hati drive, no good. And as Tony mentioned, Bridgewater back in. And here she is. Nice find to Finney on the wing corner side, no good. Roche rebound, and here's Guthrie. And really, Bridgewater staying very aggressive, even once they, once they turned it over, she stayed with them almost the second that it, they turned it over, so that's great to see. And here will be Porto, and bounding it in for the Raiders. 
It's good to see that Bridgewater hasn't lost her edge, even with the two fouls, at, which put her on the bench for a good part of the uh, second period of play. But the Sears still back at it, um, interrupting play, disrupting the ball. Uh, let's see what he can do on the offensive side to help her team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you love to see that. And as quick as she was to come back in, she's even quicker to be aggressive and stop on the defensive end. So here is Finney. Now they hit up Downer. Downer guarded by Maxwell in the paint. Bounce pass, but it's to the wrong color as it is the gold and black instead of the red and blue. And here is Guthrie on the three. No good. And now on the other side, it is Finney. And that will be called for a foul and it will remain Raiders ball. So Roche will be called for the foul. And inbounding is Porto. Bounce pass, nice setup for the Raiders as that was Niles to get it to go. So now 11 to 21 year score and the Eagles need to continue to score offensively. Well that's what the Raiders are gonna need, Zero. Just the time, there's plenty of time. Just make every basket count. With well, another turnover here. You're right there in for the Raiders, it is Bridgewater on the clear coast to coast. Fast break as she goes in and gets another bucket to her name. And now, 21 to 13, your score. 5.35 to go at the start of the third quarter. Roach guarded by Bridgewater, top of the key. It's Guthrie. And Bridgewater has uh, some deceptive speed. I mean, she, she can close on that ball really quick. Well, the Bahati missed, but Maxwell gets the rebound, can't put it back up for two. Instead, Raiders ball, beautiful work of passing. The ball getting it out as they need to. And there was Adriana Niles getting it to go. And here at the Spalding Hoop Ball Classic, a lot of leads change when we usually announce. However, this will be the first one in Bridgewater on the breakaway drive, finishes up, gets it in for two. And they're gonna have to call a timeout as Bridgewater Plays some incredible defense, forces it out, and gets a great score. And she's a uh, force multiplier. Um, definitely, she's very helpful, as mentioned on the offensive side, but her defensive prowess is paying dividends. Well, as Tony said, he really definitely hit that on the spot as he mentioned about how quick Bridgewater is and how important she is. And to get to that offensive predicament that they've been able to do and really play solid these last couple minutes. It's impressive for sure. I'm loving the action here at the Hoop Hulk Classic. I love that word. Classic. classic. You, you got to drag that one there, Lucille. Classic. classic. We'd like to thank our good friends at the Basketball Hall of Fame and our good friend John DeLiva, the president and CEO, and of course our favorite vice president, Mr. Paul Lambert. And Greg Persimo for the invitation to allow us to take in these games and to be a part of this great experience that has grown now for so many years. I remember its humble beginning under then uh, an intern, Dave Elkin, who took it over and uh, has breathed some life into it, gave it its vision, and Greg and company have brought it to what we see today. So kudos to them as we go back to the action. Well, as Tony says, back to the action on the court. It's Guthrie. She's going to fake it to Lopez. Eventually gives it to her. As now she's going to use the pick. Pump fake back to Guthrie. Guthrie guarded by Bridgewater. Has to hold her ground. And she gives it to Bahati. Puts it up. No good. Niles for the rebound. And now she gives it to Bridgewater. So Nadeska Bridgewater really an athlete tonight as she has been on all sides of the court. And the pass will lead to a travel, and that will be called on Claire Fitty. So now the Eagles will take over, and to increase that score is got to be one of the goals for them with 4.14 to go in the third quarter. So Lopez will have it. She gives it to Bahati, and it's up to Tatalatasi. She takes the three from deep, no good. And the rebound for Fitty, and the Raiders will look again as Bridgewater She'll slow down the tempo. She'll be guarded by Lopez. Spin around. Pass out to Porto on the wing for three. Can't get it to go. 
And now it's down. Down a pass, and here's Bridgewater down to the wing. Shot no good from Niles. And it's back to Porto. She can't get it to go, and now that will end that sequence as Guthrie grabs the board and gives it a title to Tassie. So now for the Eagles, Mahati loses it, and it's Niles. Adriana Niles on the fast break, Mahati chasing her down, and she doesn't matter. She can't stop it, and Niles gets it to go for two. 21-19, two-point deficit for the Raiders. They've been going uh, at it here, uh, Ciro, as we look. They're almost tying it up here with six solid baskets in a row. To, to, to break that deficit just to two points at this particular point in the game is quite impressive. It's certainly impressive, especially the circumstances they went through. And now there's Bridgewater, but she gets brought down, and it'll be a jump ball as Mahati almost loses possession of it. And it looked more like a foul more than anything than a jump ball. But well, I thought there was some contact too. Uh, especially on the neck, yeah. up there and on the head area. Mm -hmm. So for the Eagles, there will be substitutions. Olivero will come in for Guthrie. And now, they inbounded in, Mahati shot, and right before the buzzer for the shot clock violation, she gets it to go. 23 to 19, now your score. So Bridgewater moves it to Porto, Porto to find Nigel in the corner. And now on the pass, she finds nice. a nice look, but she couldn't finish, that was Emily Downer. Roach to Ortiz. Ortiz to slow it down, guarded by Bridgewater, has to move, some moves, it shifts her a little, gets her oh, back, but Bridgewater sticks with it. Bridgewater. Incredible defense to move on to the other side. She crosses back, gets her slipping, and what a sequence now to set up Porto in the corner. Shot can't fall. And now Bridgewater to take her own. She She's gets a it to go. She's a player. the dagger. And Bridgewater, incredible shot, 23 to 22. She's impressive. She's impressive. What a sequence, Tony. You got to love her. What a sequence. Her Great showing. basketball. And she's really the heart and soul of that team right now. Roach loses it. Holds on, but it's Finney with the steal to Bridgewater. Bridgewater, other side. The pump she and one. Foul. Unbelievable play from the desk of Bridgewater. As she gets that in one and an incredible finish on the fast break. And our first league change for this half this period yeah it seemed like they were in no man's land after that first loss of the lead but now they're coming back in and doing well 24 to 23 can't convert the end one but they'll get the ball back due to that hustle from Finney and now Porto gives it back to the desk of Bridgewater Bridgewater with 11 points tonight central moves to its 2-1-2 uh, Niles shot no good and now the Eagles have it so it's gonna be Olivero now. She'll be at the top of the key. Look to hand off to Ortiz. She'll isolate back. Pull up three on the wing. Good for three. And the dagger. Right there from Amani Lopez. Well, yet another Gets lead change. Go and another lead change. 26 to 24, less than a minute ago in the third quarter. Nadeshka Bridgewater hands it off to Porto. And it's on the corner shot from Finney. No good. And so now, here is Ortiz. Ball thrown out of bounds, but they were able to save it. Bridgewater hustling to get it. She stands up in a foul call. And that intensity is unmatchable, and that's just clear as day. She is showing up and playing some incredible basketball in the heart and soul of this girl is incredible. Yes, indeed. Uh, she's been exciting to watch um, for these three quarters. Um, super excited to see what the fourth quarter and finale of this game will come to. So now, on that pass of the wing, rejected by Maxwell, as she says to meet her at the rim. 26-24 will stay the score, what could have been a tie. But now, it'll be on the inbound, Porto. 
She bounds it in easy to Niles, but she can't hold on to it. Downer, she is able to recover, and she finds Bridgewater. Get it out top and clear it. 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. Bridgewater wants to test her hop step. Pass out to Nile on the wing. Beautiful Boom. look for the dagger. And what that was an game. incredible setup as we saw a great fake. And right there, the whistle sounding. So 26-27, an amazing lead change on the three. They're gonna roll it out and it will be in the hands of Amani Lopez. She'll pick it up quickly to get up a last second shot. Pump fake, three up, way out of mark. And that will end the third quarter, ladies and gentlemen, the most exciting quarter of the battle game so far. And that is no question. We saw the Jessica Bridgewater beast it out and put out an incredible third quarter performance. And most importantly, get that lead back for the Raiders. So 27 to 26, your score, Tony. What do the Eagles have to do to be in the position where they usually are? Well, they have to settle down, settle down and work the offense. We know what it is. It's go inside to Maxwell. It's no surprise to anyone here amongst the faithful. And make those stops as they're continuing to make those stops on the defensive end. But definitely, where are the paint allergies coming from? Everyone's allergic to go inside to the paint at this level. Especially Fine. when you got someone like Maxwell on your team. It's really surprising. Yes. yes. Utilize their size, uh, the physicality. The height advantage, and she's definitely um, going to make you know make good on her um, her baskets if she's rewarded with the pass. Would also like to take this opportunity to thank the assistant coaches on the central side of the ledger, Mr. Mike Anderson, no strangers to the basketball community here, Mr. James G, and Lindsay Beggy, and of course one of my favorite hoopers on the ladies side of the house one of the uh, state champions jasmine lovejoy is in the building so now the raiders will get the ball back inbounding finney to start off the fourth quarter we'll see what happens bridgewater take it off quickly finds the open porto back to bridgewater guarded by olivero and there is roach who was there for the tip but they get it back in hindsight and now on the wing the shot pumped Move back, Bridgewater with it. Swings it out, it's Finney. Pass stolen, and the Eagles will have it, and they're gonna have to slow it down. So now, Lopez could have had the shot, but instead she finds Olivero, step back three on the wing, no good, Bridgewater rebound. So now, shot goes out, and that will be Eagles ball as the pass is way off. Just over the outreached hands of our athletic director, uh, Dwayne Early, who's uh, enjoying those uh, real courtside seats. <laughs> Always got to be close up to the ball, and whether you like it or not, it's going to fly up to you sometimes, so you either enjoy it. So now, here are the Eagles. It's Olivero. Gives it to Maxwell on top of the key. She takes the three. <laughs> it's a sight that I am not used to seeing. <laughs> Almost gets it to go, and here is Porto. She'll give it off to Niles. Back to her on the corner shot. No good, Maxwell rebound. They've turned and into jump shooting teams this third quarter. Is it a question of fatigue? You can't finish with, a, with no energy. So Maxwell gonna scoop around, almost loses it, finds Bahati. Bahati shot from the midline, no good, but she goes for her own rebound, an incredible aggressiveness, sets up Olivero for three on the open shot, good for three! And that will put her up, correction two, and that will put her up big time as her foot was on the line, 28-27. And a great job for the Eagles. And now Bridgewater. Bridgewater to find Porto. Porto shot. No good. Yeah, they're starting to shoot the ball from way outside uh, the arc there. Uh, as we look at the six minute point, we do have uh, reserves on the bench who have been resting for some time. Let's see if we can well, get some. On the poke, more. Bridgewater on the other side can't convert to get that lead with the open put up, no good. You gotta make those, and especially in that case, Tony. You can't, you can't be doing that. So now Roche to set up the three this time, no good. Almost inside the mark. 
And you know, one thing to point out, Central's bench really doing a good job for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So now, there will be the buzzer sounding. So they're gonna press them up, make sure that they won't be going anywhere without a little bit of defensive presence. So now the ball tipped, but they do recover it. It's Porto, she finds Finney. Finney to spin around, guarded by Olivero, gives it up to Niles. Niles back to Finney. On the corner now is Niles. Niles to drive, puts it up, hucks it in, and it's good. <laughs> and there's the lead again for the Raiders. You just get it up and near that rim. And you... Really, yeah. I mean, that was almost, it almost looked like it was a bad shot, but once it went in, you saw, wow, it was a good take. And Maxwell can't get it to go, but she puts it back up once again. Rebound, forces her way in for two. And a great job offensively from Maxwell. And for Maxwell, she's really doing a good job on the boards. So the foul on the play will bring it on the floor and the Raiders will inbound and Tabletassi will come in for the Eagles for Roach. So Cyril, my question is, uh, what do you do if you're central at this point? Well, if you're central, obviously the three ball is working. However, you got to look to maybe outsmart them. As you mentioned earlier, when you're tired out, you really shoot more. You got to find a way to force Maxwell to keep applying pressure in the paint offensively and defensively. And that's going to be a big difference. And right there, Maxwell forces it over. And she gets it on the Eagles' side. And here is Guthrie on the top of the key. He's gonna use a screen, finds Tata Latassi in the corner. She's gonna maneuver around to Maxwell, top of the key. Maxwell back to Guthrie, Guthrie. And they're gonna call a shove, foul, and that'll be on Finney, I believe, and that will be on the ground. And that gives Central the ability to inbound it, reset it up, new shot clock. So 4-10 to go, they've got a one point lead and they need to keep that for sure, Tony. So now, on the inbound, Guthrie finds Bahati. She gets it up. Good on the end one, Tony. And there it is, forcing it in for the paint, getting those easy buckets, going to the line. They gotta convert it to increase that lead. Let's see if she can complete the Vinci's three-point play and get her team in a better position as they mount their lead at this particular point with four minutes and some change left in this fourth quarter of action. So now Bridgewater, she has it, gives it a fitty. In the corner, the Sharnik. Bounce pass, nice to Downer. Downer takes the shot. Nobody around her as she was able to just put it up. And now a one point deficit for the Raiders again. 345 to go in the game. Guthrie. She's gonna hand it off to Tal Latassi. And she's gonna take her time, gives it to Bahati. Bahati swing around, loses possession. And Tal Latassi and Maxwell both fight for it. And they both are able to force it out. Jump ball, and Central gets it back. It looks like Bridgewater I believes she's inbounding it. And the Eagles get it back. They're going to call a timeout. Timeout's call, and I guess my question I'm going to pose to you on this one is what do you do if you're the Raiders? You gotta expect the obvious. As well as I said, you know, you gotta outsmart them. It is going to be obvious when you have somebody as big as Maxwell and of course Bahati being able to have her presence in the paint. So you have to protect that. But the only problem with that is the one question is, well, if I'm protecting the paint so much, what about the wing? So really as one of the favorites, the zone coverage, as Shepard's Beavers were able to really execute yesterday. If you know, you gotta practice that always. You gotta put that in there on that three, two and let them know that we can switch our men up in this case girls, and stop them on those quick passes to slow down that momentum. And when you got somebody like Bridgewater, that's gonna be a must need because she will be all over it. And that is what you need if you're the Raiders to even get up another lead if it's by one point. And you continue to do that because we've seen her hustle on that fast break opportunity, whether it leads to a foul or a nice finish. Almost all her points have been on fast break except that three, so it's been very incredible to see. What do you say, Tony? I'd say some of the same. I think she's going to put her team on her back and go all out with all guns blazing. 
uh, it's up to Central to make the stops. I mean, they have the prowess on the inside in the paint, as you mentioned with Maxwell. The senior ball play has been great. I love the cat and mouse combo. Feed the post. Don't be afraid of that paint. I don't know why they're developing paint allergies at this point in the game. Feed that post and get inside for that higher percentage shot. So as Tony said, he really targeted on, you know, most of the stuff that is needed to say. So now it's Olivero. Gives it a Guthrie. Guthrie guarded by Bridgewater. Stepping up big. Gives it a tattle Tassie. She drives in floater before the buzzer. No good. And the shot clock violation will be called. And that will be Raiders ball. But I did like the shot selection in that paint. Get, get that Coming higher percentage inside, shot. Yeah, definitely. Not a, not, a, not a three, really. But Bridgewater gets it out on the corner. Finney, shot. Good for three. Good one for Finney. And that will be a must-need bucket. And now the Central Eagles have to retaliate. Get it back up for them. Down by two. As they go to a man-to-man -man defense uh, with the Raiders, Let's see what Central draws up on the offensive side. And here's Tauta Latassi, hooks up the shot off the glass. Good. And that will be a big shot for the Eagles as they do exactly what they needed and retaliate back. So now, we'll go out of bounds and the Eagles fall with 2.36 to go. Substitutions in as Nala Roach will come in and Amani Lopez as well. And we're all tied at 34 apiece. Yeah. I mean, it's anybody's game. Really? With this time left, too? Two minutes, 35 seconds. What's the call? <laughs> Two minutes, 35 seconds. You know, we got to see, really, what the Eagles do on this. But a good play as the Raiders get ball. So, you know, of course, the verdict, I never will go against my high school of the Springfield Central High School Golden Eagles. <laughs> I say a two-point win over the Raiders. What do you say, Tony? We'll see. <laughs> Bridgewater gives it off to Finney. Finney back to Bridgewater on the top of the key to Finney on the wing to the corner. Porto, shot, no good. And that will be Bahati on the rebound and wrote for Guthrie now to Ortiz. So, boom. Guthrie on the drive. He draws Stuck a tough because defensive of Bridgewater. assignment of Bridgewater, I tell you. She's all over the place. Lopez shifts, shot, no good. As she was able to shift the defender on that, but Bahati gets shot up, no good. They couldn't finish, but you can hear the aggravation from the coach. But Bridgewater looking to capitalize in the foul call there. Of course, Maurer screaming, where is that call? Her closing speed is amazing. Crazy. Her crazy. Her speed is crazy with the ball in hand. She's moving past people as though they're standing it's still. It's as if she doesn't have the ball in her hand. It's crazy, like you said. And she gets that to go, and that is a big shot, getting that lead up for the Raiders. And, you know, Tony, we've, we've definitely really had our eyes on her this whole game, and it just might come down to her tenacity. So now, on the missed free throw, the Eagles have to capitalize. It's Guthrie, guarded by Bridgewater Big. She accelerates, spins back. Now she's in the corner, sets up Maxwell. Maxwell to body her way in. Bridgewater, Bridgewater trying to it tie it up, and there's the jump ball call as Alternate she goes possession. right after it. And that was a great call from her to go after it, and as Tony said, alternate it for the jump ball call. And now it is Bridgewater, 35 to 34, 120 to go. Central needs a stop here. And the shot is no good. Porto rebound as she's walking out almost on the baseline in. They call a timeout to slow it down. That's a smart call, Tony. That's a smart timeout right there. Slow the tempo, draw something up to get a good look as they're shooting the ball unconsciously from the corner there. And some redemptive attempts to make they up are for the uh, turn. Very unconsciously. And I mean, it, it's almost like. You look at this, if, if there was to be, you know, that stat sheet and that spread up of uh, what is going on for them, you really see that there are so many field goal misses for them. And, I mean, there's a lot of shots they take. They really take more shots than there is passes, it seems like, if you break it down. There's so many shots, and, I mean, sure. they do get the rebound. So that's why there is so many shots. And, I mean, you can say that for both teams. But really what I'm trying to say is if this was a smarter shot selection for them, this could be a much bigger lead. 
Well, as we draw it to the conclusion of this one, uh, we have a score of 34-35. The Raiders ahead by a single point in this one. The outcome was given to me, the prediction was given to me by Ciro of a two-point win by the Lady Golden Eagles. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you go anywhere. For those of you just joining us, we have a very exciting game on hand as we have the last two days here at the Hoop Hall Classic here located at Springfield College, the birthplace of basketball and the home of the Basketball Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Back to the I mean, you know, you got to always throw that in there just because, you know, Springfield, Massachusetts, birthplace of basketball. <laughs> got to do it. And, of course, the Hoop Hall Classic. <laughs> so as the game is winding down in the last minute, this will be a very important possession. Now we introduce crunch time. So here is Niles. She gives it a downer. They have to pressure her. And it will go out of bounds. And that is a big, 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 big play turn over there. For them as they, they stop. They were definitely them. looking for Bridgewater. She has to come over and take the ball out of someone's hand as she is the playmaker. She is the general out there. Really? If yeah. you're talking Raiders. On the other hand, great opportunity for the Central Golden Eagles who capitalize and hopefully put a into this and walk out of here with the victory. Well, you know, one thing that is really important to mention is something we touched earlier that really we haven't really been able to analyze. So once Bridgewater was hit with that second foul, she was taken out for the whole quarter, really, the whole second quarter. Wasn't in there. You notice one thing about that second quarter. There's a 10-plus point lead from the Eagles, not on there. And as soon as she got back, they got that lead almost instantly with five consecutive finishes. And it was great. So now to see really what she genuinely does mean to this team is important in this last 46, four tenths of a second to go here at the Spalding Hoop Hall. Classic. Gotta emphasize the S as Tony <laughs> mentioned to me. So <laughs> you're watching Focus Springfield, ladies and gentlemen, as we have mentioned, <laughs> Crunch time is in full effect as this is the most important last couple seconds in the game. So, so the Central Eagles did call that timeout, so they'll get the ball back and see what they do after the out-of-bounds stop. And here is Lopez. Lopez now. She's going to sham, got her way. She goes down, can't finish. And wow. Almost an incredible play as what a shift. Timeout. So another timeout called Tony. And if she was able to finish that, that would have been huge. Yeah, she drew the oohs and ahs of the faithful. But, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of perplexed on all the oohs and ahs with no, no <laughs> score. I know, you, you know, know this last style points are great. Style, really, points, style are great. points are great. Yeah. But you got to get the regular, you know. I mean, everything that, every year I always do mention this, you know, you, you see a lot of them styling, but I love I love seeing that. It's always fun to see, but you got to make the shot. <laughs> you got to make the the simple and um really with 39.6 to go, they have to score on this. Because if Bridgewater's got the ball, who's to say that she's not going to circle around them 30 for 30 seconds? Because that's what she can do. Yes. And that shot clock, you're going to have to foul, and they're not even in the bonus, really. So. And as you said, uh, this is going to be very interesting because you have a 9.6 tenths of a second differential with a 30-second clock yes, remaining yeah. in this. So it's definitely a mental strategist you have to yeah you have to strategize here and i like the fact that uh coach bauer called the timeout to settle the young ladies down draw up something and if they don't have the first option then they audible and go to the second option so now on the inbound it's guthrie she finds bahati can't get it to go and that could be huge for them they're going to look to wind it down and now with 33 seconds ago it's bridgewater she's going to hold it she's going to have to circle around a waste of time and there will be a foul, which is what they want. So this is where the coach is Matt Switz. So Bridgewater put in the position to have to get these in. So first one is up, and it's good. Two-point lead. 
So now Bridgewater looking to get that second one to go. 29 and two tenths of a second to go. Bridgewater's second one is good. They need a three to go. Yes. So Guthrie now, she's gonna get it in. It's Lopez. Lopez spins around, and they both fall down. Bahati hustles for it. Now it's Lopez. Lopez fouled. And that will be on the Raiders, and that's really big for them. So being down three, they don't want to get fouled. They need to Teams get a shot only up. fourth. Uh, well, fourth the foul. seniors are And now Maxwell up. to Guthrie. Guthrie to get a shot, hopefully. She finds Maxwell. She's going to force her way in the paint. Clear as day to put her in there. And now as the game is winding down, they're going to... They call a foul on her. Yeah, the intentional. The intentional, but I mean, one thing to mention is seven seconds went down on that inbound. So that's big. That's really big. They didn't call anything on that. So on the shot clock going down, five seconds to go. On the game clock, I should say, 5.0. And if she doesn't hit both. Yeah, Bridgewater with 15. So now it's another point. one of those categories. They got to do something here. She might want to miss intentionally, you know. You never know to get that rebound back. They got to call it. They got to do something here. Guthrie to Lopez. She hooks a shot up way off the market, ladies and gentlemen. That will end tonight's main event between the Springfield Central High School Golden Eagles and the Central Catholic Raiders. And the Raiders really finished off strong and an incredible game from Alicia Maxwell and an incredible game from the Deshka Bridgewater. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an incredible ride here at the 2020 Spalding Hoopal Classic. And really what we're seeing here is just, it was an experience, Tony. Yes, Love indeed. to be here with you. And you know, for this being one of my last years, no better way to top it off. So you're watching Focus Springfield. This is Cyril Zanetti and I am with Tony Pedway signing off, ladies and gentlemen. And have a great one, everyone.